Coming up next in your birch tree forest, your birds in a birch tree art project, what you're going to do is cut out your trees. You need to first finish cutting out your trees. Please make sure when you are cutting out your trees to cut right into that black outline that you painted on the outside of your trees. Make sure there's no white paper hanging off of the edge of your tree because we want a nice contrasting, a great visual difference between your trees and your background paper. After you're done cutting out your trees, you're going to need to pick out a color for your background. And I want you to consider what time of day is it in your picture? What is the weather like? Because that will determine your color that you choose. Is it bright and sunny? Might be yellow background. Is it kind of snowy? Might be blue. Or if you just want to, grab a color that you love, like green. One thing I do want you to pay attention to is if you drew and painted your birch trees horizontally, meaning your trees are short, you're going to want to glue them to your paper in a horizontal format. If you painted your trees vertical, meaning they're tall, you are going to want to have your background paper be vertical, tall. That's very important. There shouldn't be any trees on a vertical paper that are oh, short and cut off. We want our trees to go all the way from the bottom of our paper to the top. After you have cut out your trees and picked out your background paper, you need to consider the composition, the arrangement of your trees in your picture. We talked about how if you put things right in the middle, is that the most interesting? Mm, no, not really. We expect things to be kind of in the middle. What we don't expect is to have trees a little off to the side. Mmm, now that's interesting. Also, don't put your trees right on the edge of the paper. Add a little visual interest to your composition by putting just a little bit of your color on either side. And remember, we don't want them to be totally evenly spaced. Make one tree have a lot more space in between than the others. Do your best. Think about your composition, your arrangement of your trees on your paper. When you're happy, glue it down. You'll notice I wanted to make my one of my trees a diagonal line. Totally cool. Very interesting. But Make sure you make your trees go all the way to the edge and then just cut off that little extra piece. Now it looks like that tree is going off, off far off wherever that edge of the paper may be. After you're done gluing your trees to your background paper, put this puppy on the drying rack and finish your feather paper. Remember your feather texture paper we're creating using washable markers and plain water and a fluffy watercolor brush. Your job is to fill the paper with a nice soft feathery texture. You can use any color washable markers you want, but I want you to fill the whole paper. You can choose to do just splotches of color, almost like a scribble, or you can create really interesting visual feather textures using lines and patterns. What you can do is just create your lines or your splotches of color. 
make sure you add a little variety because birds do come in many different colors. And before your marker dries, grab your watercolor brush, dip it in the water, and paint the water right over the marker so that the markers will bleed. They will get a soft, fuzzy edge to them, creating a nice, soft, feathery, fluffy texture that we're going to use for our birds. When you're all done with your feather texture paper, this goes onto the drying rack. And then you can, if there's time, create your very own implied, not real textures. Try drawing a nice smooth texture. Try drawing a nice hard texture, or maybe even a woven or jagged texture.